Everyone can be a scientist. Citizen Science calls on members of the public to help collect scientific data, often without the need for any academic training. While collecting data, citizen scientists can give feedback to the researchers about their findings and contribute to the design of experiments, giving a voice to the need of the local communities. The Extreme Citizen Science Group at University College London is a multidisciplinary team that works to bring citizen science to developing countries. For the last project, they travelled across Congo, around the area of Brazzaville, where commercial logging activities often have negative impacts on the life of local people. Jill Conquest is an anthropologist who took part in the expedition to facilitate the relationship between researchers and local people. What we're trying to do with that is, is develop a software application that can be used by local farming and hunter-gatherer populations to map their local resources and to monitor the relations they have with the logging companies in their local areas. And part of the idea behind that is to try and match it up with some of the new laws that are being introduced as part of um, the requirements that logging companies are going to have to meet, meet to sell um, their, their logs on the European market, or their wood on the European market. Although the log practices of the logging companies might be sustainable for the forests, um, there are people who live in those forests, and the um, work that the logging companies do might affect the livelihoods of those people unless the logging companies take into account that there are people living there, find out where the resources are that they use, and know not to go near those resources. To help local communities to monitor the natural resources in the area and their relationship with logging companies, the Extreme Citizen Science team has developed a special mobile app that can work for people who are not familiar with smartphones. I'm Michalis Vitos, I'm a computer scientist and currently a PhD student at the Excite Research Group. One of the biggest challenges that we had uh, in this project was the literacy. So we had to overcome this challenge by designing uh, more intuitive and uh, more user-friendly uh, user interfaces. For this purpose we used um, uh, simple drawings uh, in, com in black and white color so it could be more uh, uh, easily understandable by the, by the users. The design of the icons used were tested in a field and improved using feedback from participants. There is a particular icon in the software which uh, shows a sort of this, this arch of leaves. Mm -hmm. And what it means is a sort of demarcated area of the forest where they put up these sort of arches for uh, ceremonies to take place. Now, in one of the villages where we went, people had a lot of trouble recognizing this icon. And then when it finally became clear what it was, they were very happy. They were like, whoa. And my interpretation of that moment was that they were saying to themselves, like, whoa, this is really about us. Users can describe different situations by selecting different categories and can keep track of the negotiations and promises of the logging companies. At the moment, the logging companies are a lot more powerful than the, you know, the local population who actually live in the forest. Um, and the Congo, is, is the, the whole region, is quite well renowned for, for corruption and the sort of relationships between you know the corporate entities and the government entities um, and things like that which local people you know just don't really have a say in any of these processes quite a lot of the problem in the congo is not that the legal elements aren't there but the bigger issue is enforcement of the law you know the law is there but there isn't necessarily anybody following it up so this is why we want to go straight to the local people and ask them has the logging company actually respected your resources, you know, and can you tell us what it is that's actually happening locally? The app stores information input by the users 
and geographical locations to create a map. Transferring the data may be tricky, as there's no wireless connectivity in the deep forest. There's a, there's a finite number of images that you can select in the decision tree, so we give them numbers and, and we, com we combine this information and compress it um, to f try and fit as many as possible in a series of SMS messages. And we might even um, not use the internet at all and just uh, allow this data to accumulate on the memory cards of the phones and have people uh, collect memory cards every so many months. The team are still facing some technical challenges and in order for the app to be implemented on a large scale, the project needs more funding. But the concept works and people are keen to take part in future citizen science activities. My, I mean, my biggest impression that, that I took away from just this six-week pilot project was how enthusiastic everybody we visited was. Before we would start showing people the software and after we'd, we'd gone through and we demonstrated the application and we got them to do some mapping with it so that they understood sort of what it was for, we then asked them, OK, so if we were to come back for a much larger project, would they want to take part? And they all said, yes, absolutely, you know, we are really interested in this project, we can't wait for you to come back.